All right, this is Paul from Screen Night Scribe. Today we're going to take a look at Drama Queen. It's been requested that I take a look at that a lot. Uh, I recently just just tried to look at the interface and stuff like that. I'm going to give you sort of my opinions of just just an initial look, and I'm going to show you the interface, uh, show you how to look at your script and stuff like that. Um, and eventually I think we're going to, not in this particular video, but I think we're going to have to go through and show people how to do different things. Uh, it looks like Drama Queen's pretty powerful, but the problem is right now it's not very user-friendly, at least uh, in, in my sort of opinion. So uh, so I've gotten to the, the front page here. This is the document that you do once you load up Drama Queen. Um, now it does ask you a couple questions at the beginning, um, sort of like... Are you if you want to use AI integrated into Drama Queen, you have to get a API with Open AI. Uh, I decline to do that because I can just open up ChatGPT. I don't. I can just add that in uh, as a separate thing because you have to pay for that separately. Uh, so as we look at the beginning screen, you can see you can create a new document. You can open a document. This is just really a trial that I did. I didn't really add a lot. You can import a document. Now the interesting thing about importing a document, you can import. A final draft document. I have seen that in the Drama Queen UI and how that particularly looks. You can do an example document or you can do a plotting template. Uh, the nice thing is, is when you first start Drama Queen, you can you get access to the whole shebang um, for 31 days. Uh, so I'm just going to take a look at creating a new document because I want to show you sort of what the document looks like. Uh, so the documents again, you can choose between either a novel or a book. Uh, you can choose between an individual individual work. A mini series or a series, uh, you can begin with a plot, outline, or script. This time I'm going to try with a script uh, because I found out starting with plot wasn't very helpful. Uh, the basic structure for this particular script, um, you can right now there's no basic stru structure. I mean, you can sort of if you're if you're looking at doing this as um, a plot or uh, what was the other thing they had? You you could potentially work as an outline. So then you can break stuff up into the basic structures, and they have all of these. They have a lot of basic structures that you can look at. Uh, divide the script into scenes. You can also change that. You can change it into beats. Uh, so you can try that as well too. So let's just hit new and take a look and see what it looks like. So here's the interesting thing here too. Now if you come in with a plot, uh, so I tried this with a plot that first came in. It, it was really hard for me to understand what where stuff was at or what's going on. So if we look at the interface right now, uh, unfortunately, the beginner tutorial videos, at least according to Drama Queen, are all in German. So I don't really know how to begin stuff. Uh, but right now you can sort of, let's just take a look at sort of the, uh, uh, let's take a look at the UI and you can sort of see where stuff is at right here. I mean, it's got a lot of helpful things. I think the hard part about Drama Queen right now is again, how easy is it going to be for a newcomer to use and, and looking at this? Because I think this is a very powerful script writing program. Uh, I'm just wondering how user friendly it's going to be, especially for someone who's new at this, uh, because it does have a lot of complicated stuff up here. Because uh, the nice thing is we click on something, we type uh, storytelling, uh, the window pops over and it tells us, it gives us a description of what that particular thing is. So the one thing I want to talk about before I get too deep into the different panels and stuff, I'm going to switch the layers and take a look at plot. Uh, various labels are, are available for labeling exception. I'm just going to go with what we've had in the past. Um, so right now I'm sort of at the plot point. Um, so you can see plot here, or we can be in the script or the plot phase. Uh, for the plot, there's, there's these two nice buttons here. A lot of stuff. So if you want to add something, there's simply a positive key. Uh, or if you want to take away something, you have an X there for for you as well. And I noticed these when I came up and started using the plot as opposed to the script. Uh, but these are two nice global features. They work for about everything. Uh, but as we sort of look through the different things here at the top, again, we have the uh, storytelling guidance. Uh, first create a storyline. Uh, again, you have sort of an overview if you want to use this here. And it sort of it says select storyline from the storyline selection in the, in the top left corner of the window. Um, it's, it's sort of, so again, this is sort of trying to help you sort of figure out what your story is about. Uh, you have boards here, very similar to what you get on most screenwriting programs. And with the boards, you can um, basically board or cards uh, is basically you can just sort between the different cards. You can move scenes up and down uh, and stuff like that. Text. Uh, there you're back with your script again. The nice thing is in during this too, is you notice that you have that board or your previous thing set up. 
Um, and so if you want to have your script open, you can have your uh, board open or you can open up something else with annotate. Um, but you can sort of see as we work through here uh, that you you can replace different panels with things. And so that way you can load whatever you want into two things together. So if you want to have ideas together with your script, you can do that or storylines or characters or locations or world. Um, and so they have some nice different things to sort of talk about for, for world. Uh, they also have a story arc page. Um, no storyline has been created yet. The panel storylines allows you to create and define storylines in the panel storytelling a dramatic arc can be defined for each storyline which follows the unfolding of the events as either positive or negative viewed from the perspective of the respective storytelling's main character so uh, and then you have ai chat as well too so if you would pay for that um, you can also utilize that as well too so if we go back to text um, and just pull in our script let's see if we can just get rid of a bunch of this stuff i think the other thing too is once you open them i think you have to get rid of them so there we go, and then we can eventually make our way to, yep, you can just use yeah, another way to open up the window there. So as we're looking at the different directions, like I said, it's, so now we're on the script writing page. So how easy it is it to create a script? Uh, so let's try doing that right now together. So that seemed pretty easy. Uh, now, so if I just wanted to do an action line, we see that our action line is up here. Uh, so let's start by creating an action line. So in order to pull up that little menu there, I simply hit enter twice. Uh, now you can have a speaking character. You can create that character in J. Uh, let me make sure that I was following the conventions. So then if it automatically goes defaults to dialogue. Um, and then it, it's pretty easy. So after each of the enter, you can just use that particular menu. It does have shortcuts as well too. So you can use the shortcuts as well too. So it seems like it's fairly easy to use as a word processor. Uh, there doesn't seem to be a lot of, uh, there doesn't seem like it could be a real big learning curve in, in terms of getting the words on the page and stuff like that. So the hard part with uh, Drama Queen, at least is what I'm looking at right now, it seems to be very convoluted in the sense that uh, it talks a little bit about how to do stuff, but again, without having sort of English uh, introductory videos, it makes it sort of hard to use and stuff like that. I'm going to try to do a little bit more in-depth detail where I go through each of the things in detail and telling you what each one is, is in detail. But just sort of first impressions, this doesn't seem to be very user-friendly. It's not. I'm not saying it's not a powerful program or that you can't learn how to use it and stuff like that. But on first sort of look, um, it doesn't look as nice as something like a Kitsunerist or a Fade In or a Final Draft. Uh, there's just too much stuff going on. And not to say that that stuff isn't going to be helpful and that stuff's not going to help you produce a wonderful story. But looking at this from somebody who's maybe new to screenwriting and stuff like that, I doesn't look like something that I would probably jump in and get right away. Um, I would definitely trial it for 30 days. And it's nice that they do that. Um, but then to see if that's something that you're going to want to do um, and you can look at the different levels of what Drama Queen offers at the different levels uh, that there is. So, well, like I said, until the next video, I'm going to, like I said, I think the next time I'm, I do this, I'm going to try to break down each section a little better so you get to know each section and how to use each, se each section. Um, but for right now, uh, let me know if there's anything in particular you want me to go over. Until the next video, live well and write well.